All right, time to come uh, to start, sorry. <laughs> um, so I, I, I realized that I just have 35 minutes for this talk, it's a bit short, but I'm supposed to boot fast anyway, so let's do that efficiently. I hope you have a fast brain as well, uh, at least at this time of the, um, of the day. So um, I'm Michael Abnacker, you can read that. So actually this, this presentation is, uh, has a goal uh, to, to actually uh, give you some uh, measurements about boot time uh, techniques that can, be, that can be used. So to help you guys know in advance whether some technique is worth, um, worth exploring or not. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go, go quick on the uh, technical explanation, like how this works and things like that, and uh, I'll more focus on the savings that I achieved on this kind of, um, of system. So it's a, basically a bigger big bone black with an LCD cape. Um, connected to it, there's a standard USB webcam, and it's, um, it's just playing on, um, so booting on a standard uh, SD card from uh, Kingston, like Cat4, like a relatively normal one, uh, not, spe not, not especially fast. So it's gonna, uh, on the software side, it's gonna play uh, FFmpeg, uh, just to show the video stream from the USB uh, camera. And then this, the initial time for the system was 9.45 seconds, um, including uh, the two seconds timeout, uh, two seconds timeout in U-boot. So it, Easy to optimize, of course. <laughs> I'm not being, being very fair here. Uh, so again, here the goal is to, to, uh, to, to give you results to use. Um, and in particular, for U-Boot Falcon mode, I, I, had a, I had trouble finding some details. Like it seems that not so many people are using it yet for boot time optimization, it's, and it's really worth it, actually. So I'll, give, I'll share some, uh, some te technical details and some results with you. Uh, so here, the, um, there, are, there are great presentations about boot time reduction. They, are already, they have already been archived from previous ELC conferences. So uh, I'll give links to them. Uh, here, I just want to, to give you simple principles. The idea is to first focus on uh, optimizing things that won't hurt your, your ability to, to further reduce and measure um, in the next steps uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the boot process. So start by the, usually by the end, like user space, tool chain, and things like that, and progressively move into the early boot steps, like I mean the init scripts, and then the kernel compression, and eventually bootloader. But when you optimize the bootloader, you won't touch the kernel again, so that's fine. If you do that the opposite way, uh, you lock down, I mean, you, may, you make you would much, much faster, you, have, you, you lose the ability to, to optimize the kernel anymore because you have no tracing, no, no debugging. So the, another technique that I'm using too is um, keeping a quite slower, relatively slow storage and quite uh, as long as I can so that I can, like, uh, this, it's like, it's like a magnifying glass. Uh, it, it makes the, the times longer and easier to observe, like some, some, some uh, deltas in, um, in behavior are easier to observe if they are slow enough. Uh, this way I don't use uh, uh, like the fastest compression, for example, I keep the, the default one, which makes a bigger kernel, which takes more time. And of course, you can't have a, a boot time presentation without this quote from uh, Donald, Donald Knuff. Knuff. Uh, the premature optimization is the root of all evil. So first, toolchain optimizations. So um, I just compared an ARM toolchain uh, with a Thumb2 toolchain, and the result was surprisingly good. Like uh, with Thumb, um, I have like, uh, if the full system size is 18% uh, smaller than with a regular ARM toolchain, so it's really worth it to, to use it. There's no real uh, performance benefits. It's, it's about the same performance, so I'll buy it, I'll buy that. Uh, smaller and same performance, I keep this. I also tried to replace UCDPC, well obvious, obviously GDPC as well, uh, by uh, Muscle. And we have a win in terms of uh, size, library size, uh, starting with uh, a file system that has the library insta inside it. So I'm saving 16% um, uh, of the library size, so it's worth it. The goal eventually is to have a small system that will fit in, as an init MFS in the kernel binary, to have like just one read from the uh, MMC instead of multiple ones. Uh, 
So uh, one of the goals is to reduce the, the system size as well to make it faster to load. So we stuck to uh, UC Libc. Then optimizing the applications. So the, the general idea is to compile your application with less features, less dependencies. Um, and yes, so at the end, the, the program is smaller and you have less, less libraries that are built. Uh, so at the end, what I got with uh, FMPEG was a reduction of the total file system size as generated by build root um, from 16 megabytes to three something megabytes, uh, like by almost minus 80%. Which saves uh, about uh, 100 millisec 150 milliseconds in application loading execution time, um, because probably you try less things. Uh, the, the, no, normally, there's loading on demand, but uh, probably the code is trying to load a few things and testing things. At the end, the total reduction was about 350 milliseconds. Maybe because may there might be some faster amount time as well. I expected less, but let's take it. Uh, now let's talk about the init, uh, the init script optimization and also uh, reducing the size of the root file system as a whole. So there's a, there's, there are some techniques that are documented like to um, analyze the boot process with boot chart D, for example, or using some uh, tool that's associated with um, system D. You don't mount um, slash proc slash CS you simplify the BusyBox configuration and think, few things like that. They are well documented also on the eLinux wiki. Uh, so there's a nice chapter about boot time reduction. And switching to static executables. So I'll go through each of them. Um, so yes, effectively a, a smaller file system is faster to mount, uh, especially as our goal at the end is going to be uh, to load the root file system inside the root file system. So um, the kernel will be uh, smaller to load from storage if the initial FS is smaller. Uh, kernel decompression will be uh, faster too, normally. Um, well, I'll explain that later. <laughs> and uh, effectively, the kernel and file system are loaded inside um, a single read operation from storage, which also makes sense rather than multiple small ones, which may start need time to start, and there could be the, some overhead, uh, the file system layers and things like that. Uh, the interim FS is a very efficient technique for accessing files. So um, a technique to detect uh, unnecessary files is to take advantage of uh, the, um, the fact that Linux stores the last access times for files. So don't, don't hesitate to boot your system the first time, and then uh, just take your SD card out and just run a, a fine minus A time on it, on it and you'll find the, fi the files which ha have actually been accessed during the boot process. So that's a way of eliminating the ones that, that were not accessed, or finding out at least, and you, you can decide. Um, what else? We also simplified the BusyBox configurations, which this uh, reduced the size from 600 kilobytes, or 700 kilobytes to 86 kilobytes, with uh, 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 dynamically compiled against UCDPC, so it's quite nice in terms of size. Uh, and at the, at the end, the total file system size was reduced uh, by 24%, like down to 2.33 uh, megabytes. In terms of boot time difference, it's hardly noticeable because of the on-demand loading. Uh, I guess, and, and also because the uh, init scripts didn't take much time anyway. Um, here in that system, I just had two executables, actually BusyBox and um, FFmpeg. It, 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 it really made sense to eliminate the shared libraries because uh, you have a lot of code that you eventually don't use. Effectively, you might copy some code inside two executables, FFmpeg and BusyBox, but the overhead is still not so much. So here, as, as you can see, you can see the content of the file system at the end. It's, it's the only thing that's left in the file system after my optimizations. So eventually, yes, I'm, I'm down to 158 megabytes uh, of, of total storage space, as measured um, by the tar archive that BuildRoot um, generates. So that's, that's all I need, actually, at the end. Uh, some file system optimizations. Well, we could test uh, various file systems. Here, uh, the goal is simple. We're just switching to an interim FS. So um, 
where we, 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 we did compare with other file systems, but it really made sense to switch to any trimester space in, in that case. And so the root file system is embedded in the kernel image. Uh, there's just one access to storage, as I told you. You don't need uh, block storage and file system drivers. Um, so the, the, kernel, the kernel is going to be bigger because you include the file system inside. But once you remove uh, the, um, the uh, once you remove uh, that's the next slide actually once you remove the, the block support and MMC support in the in the kernel, you 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 actually uh, get back the the, size, the overhead uh, no not, not exactly but the boot time that you uh, that you lost because the kernel was bigger. The, the kernel is still bigger with an ETRMFS than it was before, but you recover the, uh, the extra time uh, decompressing the kernel and copying it. So there's uh, something you have to remember that people may not uh, realize is that it's very important to not compress the ETRMFS, which is not the default, at least for the Biggerbone Black uh, dev config file. So uh, make sure you have um, ETRMFS, sorry, uh, compression none. Otherwise, the, comp the, the, the initial MFS is, compre is compressed twice, once before being embedded in the, in the kernel, and then, and then the kernel um, compresses it again. So this actually uh, achieved like uh, a reduction of size of 200 kilobytes and saved about 170 mega milliseconds of boot time. Right. Uh, so at so at the end, effectively, um, I. I got back the same boot time uh, as before, um, even a little less than before, even though the kernel was bigger. Thanks to having uh, uh, less, things to uh, less things to initialize uh, at boot time, like no block support, no MNC support. Uh, now a few words about kernel optimizations. Uh, you know there's these, um, uh, init call debug feature in the kernel that allows you to, to dump actually the info, some information about the starting um, time and ending time of uh, function calls during the boot process. So um, you can use this uh, to dump more information in the, in the kernel log. And then you write your D message or you, you copy the con console output to a file and you process it with uh, scripts bootgraph.pl and it generates a, uh, a graph like this with the uh, biggest uh, consumers of boot time. So one one of the first ones was um, oh no first first the technique uh, you could use you could look, you you actually get the names of the functions here you can look at look at, look them up in Elixir typically uh, Elixir.bootlin.com that indexes the the kernel source code and then you can try to eliminate uh, to figure out what it what this means and whether you need need it or not. So um, just beware that some functions that are reported by the init call debug are actually the name of a module underscore in it. They don't correspond to an actual function name in the source code. Then you can use some techniques to try to optimize the existing drivers, like looking for parameters that would impact the behavior of, um, of, of modules and, and, and account for the increased delay. So just an example, uh, using this, I, I, I realized that um, before this, th there's a tracer init, trace trace FS. So all the init uh, tra tracing infrastructure here was taking about like well, 550 milliseconds to, to initialize. Uh, that was enabled by default, so I removed it and saved a lot of space and, uh, and time. Uh, others, there's the um, TTY interface, the serial interface for the OMAP, which, which, which is taking a huge amount of, of time. Um, I didn't find an obvious reason in the code. I, I found some uh, parameters corresponding to the num number of TTYs that are um, initialized, but haven't managed to, to, to change that yet. Uh, other things like a uh, network driver uh, that, need, that, that will be disabled anyway, so uh, I took care of it. Uh, some things that, that are related to the USB uh, initialization of the, the camera. It cannot be skipped, I have to keep it. And all the other ones were actually uh, not low hanging fruits, well, they, they were quite big, so, uh, quite small, sorry. So I meant I expected to, to save the, the corresponding time by eliminating some features from the, um, from the kernel by working on the con kernel configuration and reducing the number of features. 
Uh, the preset loops per GFE is a well-documented uh, technique for reducing the time. So um, when you boot for the first time, the, the kernel is going to estimate how, how fast it goes through the calibration loop that you use in new delay. Um, so it's, no, it's not necessary to run this, uh, this loop every time. You just uh, do it once, get the loops per GFE value, and feed it to the kernel command line. So in, um, in the past, it was saving more time. Now it's saving 82 milliseconds. Um, on the Linux, the Linux wiki, it may be still 200 milliseconds, if I, if I recall correctly. Right, or 25 GFEs, or 250 GFEs, or two, yeah, 25 GFEs. Um, another, another thing is SMP. So people were saying try SMP, but I have never tried. And effectively on a single core CPU, or even in a multi-core CPU, it could make sense to disable SMP, which makes uh, your system faster, um, like this, like 126 me me milliseconds of, uh, of uh, boot time savings, and a noticeable um, size reduction as well. Uh, compressed kernel, so uh, all the time when I mention a kernel size, it's gonna be compressed, so it's uh, even bigger if you decompress it. And it also contains the initram FS, so it is, um, it's not completely fair. Uh, I mean, you, if, you, if you remove the initram FS size inside the kernel, it's even better saving, savings. Uh, so here, if you have only one CPU core, you could, that's uh, a clear winner. Otherwise, if you have multiple cores, you might try to start with, you, have, you need SMP, of course, but you may try with one core and plug in the, the, the next ones. I don't know what it's, what it's, what it's, what it's, what it's going to, to give you. Um, removing kernel module support will save 82 kilobytes of compressed kernel size, 20 milliseconds of uh, boot time. I had a bigger number in mind, but now that's better, probably. I, I remembered from past experiments uh, something like 300 kilobytes, but now it's more efficient, I guess. But it's, again, it's the compressed kernel. So be careful when you do this. Be cautious. Take your time. <laughs> Otherwise, you end up like being very feeling lucky and removing lots of things, and you have no clue why your kernel doesn't boot anymore. Oh yes, um, be and notice that. Uh, um, so what I, what I what I had to do to do this is first remove all modules. Otherwise, if I remove module support, all the modules are turned into, which I don't use in my system, I don't load modules, are turned into static ones, and you end up with features that you don't know whether you can dis remove them or not. So I'm looking for a way to turn all modules to no in an automatic way. So maybe by just uh, doing a set on the config files, but it's gonna disrupt some dependencies. So I'm not sure exactly um, what the best way is to, to, to turn modules into no. Maybe a new, uh, star config, uh, make something, all no modules or something like that would be, would be nice. So remove all modules first, and then you can um, re remove module support, and then remove uh, the static ones that you don't need. Uh, another technique is to uh, silence the console with the quiet command line parameter. It says uh, 577 milliseconds. Uh, that's good. That's uh, very nice because the console is a slow device, so that's easy to understand why it's, uh, it saves that much uh, time. And then, you, of course, you can go ahead and beyond and um, re remove complete support for um, writing messages. Uh, like, even the messages don't, don't get compiled in, uh, which saves a lot of uh, kernel size. So, uh, disable config print k, config bug, which saves about 5% of the size. Uh, also, removing case all sims su surprised me because it saved like 100 and uh, yeah, 107 kilobytes uh, for the compressed kernel, so it means it eats up a lot, lot of space. Uh, the total savings for both, all of these things, silencing the, and turning off the kernel messages, uh, like s saved a lot of time, uh, 700 megabyte, uh, milliseconds, and more than 200 uh, kilobytes in the compressed kernel, so in terms of, before compression, it mu it's probably much more. Uh, using config embedded and config expert allows you to, to turn your um, generic kernel, which can run any application, into a dedicated one, which can only run the, the system calls that you, that you need to, to run. So it can, you, you can command out, like, so, compile out some, some system calls that you're sure you, you never use in your, in your particular system. Uh, this reduces the, the size by 51 kilobytes compressed and the boot time by 34 milliseconds 
essentially because there's less code to initialize and uh, the, the kernel is smaller. I tried thumb to kernel. Um, it didn't work this time. So in user space, it was a good result, but in, in, in kernel space, surprisingly, with the same tool chain, I got um, 40 kilobytes of extra space. And a total boost time that was also increased by five milliseconds, so I, I didn't select that one. I probably need to. Uh, and any, any idea why this, this is this way? Ah, okay. So I, I, did, I did try effectively to, um, to, to disable ARM and WINE separately, but you, 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 you device to do that together. So I'll try, yeah. Thanks. So I'll, I'll do that the, the other way. Like first um, disable the arm and un unwinder and then and, this, and then thumb. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I, I made some tests with the slab allocators. No change. Slab is still the best. Uh, slab, which is supposed to be much simpler, is actually not so good in terms of performance. It's, it's a disaster. Even for uh, um, well, I have I have a, a, like. 511, uh, 512 megabytes of RAM, so maybe it's too much for slab. slab. So I, I stuck to slab. So sl slab apparently makes sense for very small uh, s systems with a very small amount of memory. If I had reduced the amount of RAM, maybe, ah yeah, that's an idea. Like boot my bigger bone blank with just 16 megs of RAM and see uh, if it gets bigger, if it gets better. I, I, I forgot about that, that, that idea. But effectively, it's much, 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 much slower, like more than one, almost 150 uh, seconds of uh, increased boot time. Uh, kernel compression is interesting too. You have uh, various uh, compression schemes that are available. By default, it's uh, LZMA, at least in, in bone black. I guess it's board dependent, uh, or maybe it's a default, which makes sense, I guess, for x86. Like, so I made some tests. Um, I updated the tests I had before, which were based on a 3.1 kernel. So um, here, as you can see, LZO wins over LZMA, and even um, GZIP, which is actually the closest one. So the, the best co contenders are uh, GZIP and LZO, but LZO wins. So LZO is a, is a very fast decompressor. It doesn't compress as well as uh, GZIP can do, like 15% uh, less, something like that, but it's very fast. So you, ha you have a bit bigger kernel, but it, it's much faster to decompress. Um, at that time, it was time to switch to faster storage because we are close between uh, GZIP and, um, and um, LZO. So I, I, I selected some, um, some SD cards with better performance. Um, even, and eventually what it hap happened, I found a model, model that was not the highest end model uh, of SD cards, uh, but it was the, the, guess, the best first performance I, I could get. Like, if, even if you take a, like an, a SanDisk extreme, extreme, extreme something, you, the limitation is eventually what the hardware can do in terms of read, read performance, I guess. So here, uh, LZO still wins, uh, even with a, yeah, the, the difference is about the same. But I, then from, the, from now on, I, I'm sticking on the uh, faster st uh, storage. But I didn't want that to disturb the the tests. I tried uh, CC optimized for size, so compiling the kernel with minus OS instead of minus O2. Uh, actually, the, the results depends on how fast your CPU is. So on the bigger bone black, the winner is O2. Uh, the kernel eventually is, um, no, no, OS is a, a little faster, a little faster, but hardly, four milliseconds. But if you have a slower CPU, you can really have OS slowing down your machine significantly. Uh, and keep in mind that the system calls that you're making uh, will run some kernel routines that will be slower to, 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 to execute. So that might, be, might, not, might, that might not always be a good solution to, to use OS uh, in terms of long-term long, long long performance. So here I, I chose OS. But it, it really depends on, uh, on, your, on your platform, on how fast uh, your CPU can be, or how slow it can be. Uh, other things, removing the proc file system uh, removes about 50 uh, kilobytes of space. But in my case, even though proc was not mounted, I believe, 
uh, FFmpeg stopped working when I removed support for proc. So maybe FFmpeg mounts proc by itself. If it doesn't find it, that's funny. So at least I could remove some, um, some support like slash, slash proc slash sys, uh, but saved a little bit, not much. Uh, removing CSFS uh, saved uh, to 22 kilobytes uh, and, and 35 uh, milliseconds of boot time. So that's good. So you can do that if that's compatible with your, what your applications are expecting, of, of course. So if you're lucky, you don't use proc and sys, you're fine. Otherwise, you can't do that. Uh, removing um, all the compile time checks, all the compiler options in kernel hacking will save uh, about 40 kilobytes, especially config debug info, which I expect it to be bigger. And also effectively changing the arm unwinder um, technique for, for nicer stack traces, uh, replacing the EABI stack unwi unwinder by the default one, um, saves uh, effectively 24 kilobytes of space. So I'll, I'll try with the firm two and see how they, they interact. So there's a little bit of here uh, increase uh, in, t in terms of, of, of booting, but it, it's, it's uh, almost negligible. So I, I kept uh, this, uh, the default unwinder. No, I mean, the, the original unwinder for, for ARM. Another technique you can use is appending the DTB to the, to the kernel. Uh, it's just because I observed that, I observed that uh, if you, in your boot, you, you see the, the first big load, loading of the um, Z image is, fa is fast because it's big enough, but the um, DTB is smaller and therefore the performance is not what you, is not the best one. And therefore, uh, oops, the, 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 the idea was to, to um, use the, sorry, the old technique. Uh, when you boot didn't support the uh, DTB, you just appended the, uh, the DTB at the end of the kernel, uh, the kernel binary, and it just works. So I'm, I'm just doing this, like cutting them and, and loading. That, that I just have one image to load instead of two, and effectively the performance is better. Like I save 20, 20 milliseconds uh, of uh, boot time. Like I, I measure that at kernel, starting kernel time, user space starting time. It's a little bit, but it can, it can give you the, the extra milliseconds that you need to, to achieve your objectives. And to finish, uh, the bootloader optimizations. So there are lots of techniques that are well documented for improving your boot, which is a slow, uh, slow program by default. Um, here, I just decided to skip U boot all the way and using the Falcon mode. So it is, it's just, instead of loading the, the second stage of U boot, you just load um, Linux right away taking advantage of the Falcon mod infrastructure of, uh, of uh, U-Boot, which is actually easy to use. And the nice thing about it is the same technique for, for using it, uh, whatever the board that, that you have provided, it supports the U-Boot SPL. So um, you need the U-Boot legacy image, uh, so U image instead of a Z image. So you have to load the um, loading address of the, that kernel inside the uh, U image container. You copy that to the SD card. Um, an optimization in uh, U, the U-Boot, uh, at, at U-Boot compile time was to disable support for an environment in the SPL, which apparently is possible, but takes a lot of time. Uh, so I saved 250 milliseconds. It does really, uh, the, the, the environment was huge, like uh, 128, uh, whatever, maybe, I don't remember the size, but it was unnecessarily big, right? Uh, so in case you want, you want to use the um, Falcon mode, uh, we have uh, full details on our training labs. I'm sorry. But uh, here are the most important ones. So to, to run the Falcon mode, you just need to uh, first load the U image in U boot, uh, set the boot args if you don't have it yet, we already have it actually, when you boot in normal mode. Uh, then you simulate uh, the uh, booting the Linux kernel. So it's just, just like boot Z, or actually boot M with U, U image. It just loads the kernel, uh, kernel headers, prepares the A tags, uh, for passing that information to the kernel and boot it, but it doesn't do that. It just prepares that information from reading the, the kernel binary and, and uh, writes, eventually you can write that to a file that's called args on the MMC card, uh, just to storing that information so that U-boot doesn't have to compute it every time you boot. Uh, here the size is a bit arbitrary. <laughs> it can be probably smaller. So that's uh, 16K uh, for that information. I, I didn't have time to, to figure out exactly the, the, the exact size of it. So once you have done all these uh, four steps, 
you just can reset, and your boot will, uh, your board will just boot with through the, the SPL, uh, the, the, the first part of your boot, and directly and straight to the Linux kernel. Um, and in, in case you need to get back to the previous U boot, just take your SD card, um, into a normal U boot, just take the SD card out, remove the ARCS file, and you're good to go. And that's the normal case with DTB, so that's the same thing. Except that you're, instead of exporting A tags, you export uh, FTD information, Latin device tree. But otherwise, here, um, when you use SPL export, you have the load, the, the address in RAM where the, uh, the data are, like this, this one, sorry. Uh, and the size of it, like the, the end and uh, the beginning, so you compute the size from, from, the, from both, uh, both numbers. So I, the Falcon mode is nice because it saves uh, almost 500 milliseconds of boot time, uh, like not going through your boot, so I didn't have to, even have to optimize it. Uh, and the total boot time at the end here is now uh, 2.5 milliseconds. So here I have something to explain. Um, that's, that's, that this, this time is when I'm in user space, so I'm in user space after uh, 775 uh, milliseconds roughly. Uh, and now I have, uh, think, think because of the fact I'm connected to a USB camera, uh, US, USB is asynchronous, I have to wait for the camera to be detected, and in my case it takes one but two seconds. I haven't managed to address that yet. So it's a bit frustrating because I'm doing nothing for one or two seconds. I could like display a splash screen and do things, or, or just, instead of using a camera, I probably will uh, switch to just displaying a video, uh, which could start immediately. So now you can see, um, after, when, once dev video is ready, I start, run uh, FFmpeg, which takes about like 500 milliseconds to, to run and, and, and start uh, showing the first frame uh, on the screen. So I modified FFmpeg to actually um, write a message on its log uh, after decoding the first frame and actually to write a GPIO as well um, so that I could uh, count the time on, our, on our Arduino that's connected to the, to the board. So I didn't manage to effectively to reduce that time for USB. Any ideas for making USB synchronous? Yes? Uh, I don't know about synchronous, but you can go in and, and tweak the timeout value. We'll be out of, out of the USB spec, so you can probe that. Uh, like in the, um, in, the in the driver? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll try. Like the USB core? Yeah. Ah, okay, thanks. Hey. Thanks. Uh, didn't manage to boot yet without the TTY layer, but uh, that probably uh, needed extra work. Um, but I expected to save a, hundreds, a few hundreds of milliseconds. And so if I elimin eliminate the, the, this, like, the, the, the 600 milliseconds that I was found founding in, a, in the uh, boot tracer, plus uh, this one that two seconds for the USB camera to be enumerated, uh, I, I'm gonna be, I should be below one second. One second, so that's quite nice. Um, yeah, the time is limited. I just have two minutes left. So um, don't miss uh, Chris uh, Simon Simmons uh, presentation tomorrow on uh, optimizations related to system D. You have other presentations um, from past ELCs which are brilliant. So I, I put the, the ones I, I love best. Uh, there's also our uh, boot time uh, training materials and labs, which are more extensive slides on the various techniques to be used and advice. So that's a uh, training course we can teach as well. So questions, suggestions, or comments, if we have time. And uh, I, I pre I'd like to finish with this, like a picture of the various techniques that, that, that I used and um, highlighting the, the most important ones as hopefully it helps you to, to explore um, some techniques which are really w were worth it in our case at least. Any questions? Yes. Hello. One of the suggestions for you, if you change the uh, fat size, uh, you take your image from the fat, if you make it very small, you can uh, reduce uh, boot time, or if you use uh, raw, um, raw partition instead of FAT, it would be even uh, faster. Also, you can remove FAT support from the U-boot, which is... Quite true. 
that's a, um, I haven't had time to do that, but it's the, the next one. Yes, effectively. Directly raw, read raw data at, at fixed offsets rather than reading, going through fat. Thanks. I have a question about uh, another like side of this optimization. How do you debug such a system without pins, without <laughs> trace? It's getting yeah. worse and worse. Like the yeah. so do, do you enable yeah. everything back and debug it or? Uh? No. Well, I have. I really have to do things in the right order. Like um, op, 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 uh, debug first and then optimize. But so analyze the uh, the performance with things like S trace and, and things like that. Do a, as much tracing as I need to do ahead of time, or not too late at least. Otherwise, with this approach, effectively at the at the last stage and stages, I'm stuck. <laughs> effectively. Actually, there uh, one of the things I used to do was uh, I had some macros to write directly to the serial port. So, and then I could use uh, a serial timing program. So, oh, or, I... or you can, if you have a logic analyzer, use GPIOs. Ah, oh, yeah. So it's it's not like having the full print K, but just yeah, for your just, own, just out of out of character. All right, good or idea. A number. Yeah, or, oh, wait, or oh, LEDs. Yes. And by the way, I was using Grab Serial from you, so oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, it's, it's worth mentioning. Everything was done with Grab Serial here. Thanks. <laughs> Maybe answer to this, and uh, I didn't understand it correctly, but. Uh, did you already, uh, did you uh, at all include init scripts uh, in your example, or d did you uh, just do init equals uh, ffmpeg? Yes, right, exactly. Yes, so init equals my play video script that waits for the video device to be ready and then start ffmpeg. So just when uh, I replaced the init script by just my own, own, own script, which is not init anymore. So if you, if, effectively, if you, uh, Exit, you, you cannot, there's a kernel panic immediately. Have you tried bypassing the init script altogether, just pointing directly to, uh, to, to FFmpeg with a symlink? Ah, right, but I still need to parse the command line for FFmpeg. Well, this, so I have like a script that calls uh, FFmpeg almost right away, waiting for the dev device, the device, video device to be ready. But it should work. And effectively, all the effectively you can have your, your, all the mounting and things like that is easy to do from C code. So uh, waiting for the device file to be present, mounting something if you need to mount something, uh, can be done in C code. So effectively, I could tweak FFmpeg to to do that directly. True, and I would save the, the time like executing uh, BusyBox SH and things like that. I would save a lot of time too, some time at least. Uh, about the disabled tracing, it takes uh, 550 milliseconds. It uh, sounds like a very big part, I think. So why does the disabled tracing take so much time? Which, which one, sorry? Disable tracing. Oh, yeah. Um, effectively, that's quite surprising. Um, well, it's, I, I guess there's a lot of overhead in that case. Uh, I should investigate that probably in deeper detail, but that's what I observed. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's surprising that in a, in a kind of production dev config, you have like this option that really slows down boot time significantly. So that's something worth investigating and maybe change the dev config for, for, that, for that CPU family. Unfortunately, I think we're out of time. Yes. So. Thank you. Yes.